In this video, we are going to look at formula auditing. There are a couple of important aspects to formula auditing. The first one is trace precedence. This basically tracks the input cells that are used to calculate the output. The second one is tracing dependence. This basically tracks the output cell, which is essentially using the current or the existing cell to calculate an output. This basically tells the user about the cells which are dependent on the existing cells or the cells which refer to the existing cell for input. Finally, evaluate formula. When we have huge formulas which seem to be very difficult and they have multiple conditions in them, in order to quickly understand these formulas, evaluate formula can be used. So now let's look at an example to better understand formula auditing. Oftentimes we are asked to figure out a worksheet which we may not have developed. It might have come from another senior and we need to kind of figure that worksheet out and maybe build another model based on various calculations in that worksheet. So first thing we need to be able to check that worksheet, trace the errors if there are any. And secondly, we need to know which formula is coming from what kind of data. So that's essentially what are its precedence and what are its dependents. And at times there could be certain formulas which are very huge. So we need to try to figure them out as well in a very short period of time. So let's look at trace precedence and trace dependence. Let's say we have this particular column and we would like to know how was this calculated, where is, where is the input for this particular cell coming from, and is this cell providing any input to other cells? Which essentially means how is the cell being calculated and is the output generated from this cell being used to calculate any other variables. So in order to do that, I'm going to go to the formula tab. Under formula auditing, I'm going to, to click on trace precedence. Once I do that, notice a blue line with arrow has appeared. So this is basically telling us all of these cells act as input for this particular cell, which is basically calculating the sum. Now we would like to know, is the input from this cell being used to calculate anything else in this worksheet? So in order to do that, under formula auditing, I'm going to click on trace dependence. Once I do that, notice another blue line with arrow has appeared and it's pointing at cell at 75, which is basically telling us that the average has been calculated based on sum. Now, if you would like to know how is the average being calculated, then you need to again click on trace precedence and it will tell us that all of these cells are being used to calculate average. Now you see there are way too many arrows, blue lines in this worksheet and you would like to remove all of them. In order to do that, just go to formula auditing and click on remove arrows. If you do that, all of these would be removed. Now you might want to print the worksheet with precedence and dependence as it is with these blue arrows, with these blue lines. So once you have them on your sheet, you can simply go to print preview. And if you do that, you'll notice that it is already there. And if you click on print, it will print as it is with those blue lines. Now, let's say we would like to be able to figure out how did this error occur? We would like to know where is this coming from? In order to do that, Again, you need to go to the formula auditing under formulas tab and click on error checking drop down. Once you do that, click on trace error. 
and I'll show you exactly where it is coming from. So this divide by zero error is essentially because there's no value in the sum column and these other columns are also blank. So this is how easily it can be figured out. Now let's say we have this particular worksheet and it has this huge formula notice. There are way too many conditions. It's basically a nested if function. And what this formula is doing is that if the R status is invoiced, then it is adding plus one to the unit price. If the R status is on hold, then it is subtracting one dollars from the unit price. If the order status is in no stock, then it would add simply 0.5 dollars to the unit price. And if the order status is none, then it would simply take the unit price as it is. So I'm going to click on the cell and under formula auditing, I'm going to click on evaluate formula. Once I do that, another window would pop up with the formula in it and notice that C8 is underlined because that's the first cell which is going to be evaluated. So I'm going to click on evaluate and notice what it has done. This is cell C8 and it has checked for whether cell C8 is equal to invoice or not. And that's what it has typed here. Invoice is equal to invoice. Now I'm going to click on evaluate again and once I do that, it's going to type in true because this particular cell is equal to invoiced. The word true is in italics because that part of the formula is done. Now, the next part of the formula is cell E8, which is my unit price, $18. So I'm going to click on evaluate again. And once I do that, notice it has converted E8 to $18 and if I click on evaluate again it's going to turn into $19 because it has added that. Now it's going to check the rest of the condition. So once I click on evaluate now it's just going to give me $19 because it doesn't need to check for other conditions which is on hold no stock none because the first condition already was true. So I'm simply going to click close. So you can see this is how easy it is to understand the formula if the formula is huge and you need to quickly figure it out. Simply use evaluate formula under formula auditing. Hope this was useful. This video was brought to you by CXO Learning Academy, a premier learning initiative by CXO Math. For any queries, you can email us at learning at cxomath.com.